that identity and perception are linked, who we are relates to what we think about things and how we make sense of the world. Isn't that interesting? Mm hmm. Have you ever had an experience where after you had that experience, you didn't quite think about things in exactly the same way anymore? How does your age relate to what you think? Do you feel like the way that people younger than you or older than you do certain things is kind of unusual to you or outside of what you might consider to be normal? This is the basic premise of standpoint theory, that a person's identity in relation to power has a strong influence on the way that they perceive things. So how does access to power relate to perception? For this, I like to think about a workplace and I like to think about the relationships between bosses and workers. Think about a place where you've worked before and a relationship that you've had with a boss. Did you feel like you and the boss saw things in the same way, generally speaking? Did you feel like you had the same goals as your boss? Did you feel like you had the same ideas about the way that the workplace should be run? Did you have the same ideas about what was fair and what was unfair? Chances are that you saw things very differently. If your experience is anything like mine, you probably saw things quite differently. And a really big part of that is because there's a differing level of access to power, right? In that instance, bosses have more power than workers do. So they're likely to think pretty differently about things, even about the same things they're likely to feel pretty differently about. So standpoint in this instance is kind of literal, actually. Imagine you're trying to make sense of the city of San Francisco by walking through the streets versus by flying over it in an airplane. You're going to be seeing technically the same thing, right, for the most part, but you're seeing it from a very different vantage point. And that's going to influence really profoundly how you see it and what it looks like to you, how you make sense of it. And so standpoint theory says our identity and how it relates to power does something kind of like that, that it really will influence what we perceive as real, what we perceive as true or false, what we perceive as important or less important, right? It has a pretty profound influence on our perception in those senses. So let me share kind of this silly image with you. It's silly, but it accomplishes something that I'm hoping to accomplish quite well. And that is that these two people are literally observing the same thing, but from different positions, different standpoints. And the standpoint that they're perceiving this thing from is influencing to the point of determining what it is they think they're seeing exactly. So in 1983, a theorist named Nancy Hartsock developed what is called feminist standpoint theory. And feminist standpoint theory builds upon what we've been talking about as sort of a basic version of standpoint theory. And since 1983, feminist standpoint theory has been expanded pretty substantially by a variety of really brilliant scholars. And I'm going to link to their work here. So you can look into them if you're curious about following how the theory has evolved over time. So Hartsock in 1983 argued that yes, a person's identity in relation to power influences the way they perceive things, but she added something else. And she argued that in a patriarchal society, so a patriarchy is a society that organizes things according to the dominance of men. So patriarchal societies construct men as the gender identity that is the ideal gender identity, is the default gender identity, and people of other gender identities are marginalized, oppressed, and seen as other in the context of patriarchy, right? So 
she argued that because of that, because men in patriarchal societies like the United States are privileged because they're idealized, they occupy a higher position of power hierarchically than people of other gender identities. And as such, she argued that people are going to see things in very different in very different ways, excuse me, depending upon their gender identity. So one of the things that you might think is that with privilege comes the ability to not have to experience a lot of negative things, right? The ability to not have to think about a variety of things. So one of the privileges of privilege is that a person with it doesn't have to think about it, right? They have the privilege to not even have to think about privilege. So in a patriarchal society, men have that kind of privilege. And so there's a variety of things that we don't need to think about, right? Whereas people of other gender identities have to think about those things. And they're thinking about those things most likely all the time because they're experiencing the negative side of all of that, right? They're experiencing barriers, they're experiencing oppression, they're experiencing discrimination. So feminist standpoint theory argues that marginalized and oppressed groups actually see reality more accurately than privileged people do. It's easier to see barriers when you experience them than when you don't, right? And that's kind of what feminist standpoint theory is arguing, that because marginalized and oppressed groups are experiencing more barriers systematically than privileged groups are, they're going to see those barriers more clearly and they're going to see how power operates in society with more clarity than people of privileged groups. So since then, the conversation has kind of been expanded, right? Early feminist stand standpoint theory said, men perceive the world this way, women perceive the world this way. That's not a very inclusive way to think about gender. It's very binary to think about gender in terms of only men and women, right? But it's also not very intersectional. So you might think about, do all men see the world in the same way? Do all men experience privilege in the same way? Do all women see the world in the same way? Do all women experience privilege and oppression in the same way, right? So what does it mean when we factor in race into the conversation? How does that relate to the way that people navigate power dynamics? And how does that relate to the way that people perceive things? What does it mean to factor in sexuality, age, nationality, right? Religion, ability, socioeconomic class, and so on. Thinking about identity and how these categories relate to each other more holistically and how these things all relate to power, I think gives us a more nuanced insight into standpoint and ultimately how a person's identity and how their identities relate to power will influence their perception. So that's the big overview of feminist standpoint theory for you. And it's a very basic overview. I've kind of oversimplified it in this conversation, but I hope that it helps the theory make more sense to you. And if you're interested in exploring this a bit more, I've provided some resources for you. I'm going to include some references at the end of this, this discussion that you can follow if you want to check it out a bit more. All right, thank you for listening and I hope you've enjoyed my discussion.